Hey y'all, I am, hey. <laughs> we are out here in Death Valley Junction, California. I had to say that three times fast. DVJ. Okay, okay good to know. <laughs> this is my friend Jenny, and uh, she has an absolutely wonderful YouTube uh, channel that I've been following, and she just has, just, she's a patriot. She does great things on her channel, and uh, I, I love following her. And she's agreed to meet me out here at, uh, at DVJ. Uh, so we're gonna tour this uh, facility. It's, it's fascinating. There's amazing desert history here. And also we're gonna do a cemetery uh, cleanup yes. after this. That's the real reason why I brought you out here. Thank you. Is to come clean a cemetery. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And- uh, Thanks for coming. So Jenny's gonna give a little tour of the, of the area and a, a wonderful woman who, uh, she doesn't have a grave site, but she, she is here on the property. And uh, it, it's fascinating, so uh, you know, tune in and, and uh, we're off to do this, yeah. All right. All right, let's welcome go. Welcome to Amargosa. Thank you. Okay, so welcome to Death Valley Junction. The town itself has been here since the late 1800s, but the building that we'll just kind of point through on the outside came in 1924. Um, but one of our most iconic pieces here in the junction is the garage which was built in the 30s 1935 but it's also from a famous film called lost highway and most people don't realize that because the film itself is based in los angeles also the spooky hallway that we have inside of our hotel is an iconic scene from lost highway so the building itself here is a giant civic center um, originally when it was built. So the cafe, which is currently closed due to COVID, used to be the superintendent's office, followed by the grocery store. So there was a general store. Right here? That, yeah, right in there. The alcove, where we got our mailboxes, because there are four residents in Death Valley Junction, and if you'd like to send them mail, you can. Um, that's the bank, the original bank. Um, and then behind there was a little tiny shop we also have a barber shop, a billard hall, um, and then that's this little leg of the U. Okay. Now, as we were walking and talking, you can see back there's the alcove that was the bank, and that little shop right there, I believe, was the barber shop. And then in here was uh, just some little businesses and I think a billiards hall. And then you come around to the hotel. Awesome, let's go inside. hotel and, and the paintings and pictures of Marta uh they're, they're absolutely wonderful aren't they incredible yeah they really are she showed up in the late 60s in the when from the conception of the hotel until the 40s it actually was a hotel hotel and then the second half of this building was a dormitory but when Marta took over for the property and transformed the opera house she started painting in the hotel uh -huh. just to keep herself busy so <laughs> there are yes the, the, the it's so beautiful in there and there's even hand-painted rooms oh wow that we didn't wow. get to go in um but uh this corridor halfway down becomes just the old dormitory for the workers uh -huh. um, and what's known as spooky hollow okay and the opera house is over in the corner yes as we're going up to the opera house, this in the 1920s up until the 40s was the hospital in town. And then next to wow. it was the doctor's office and his apartment because they actually had to give the guy a place to live if he's gonna live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> sure. And uh, 
And there was actually, at the, at the peak of, of its existence, there was about 300, 350 people who lived in Death Valley Junction. So there was quite a few births and obviously a lot of deaths because of mining. Yeah. And they used to have, uh, so the opera house here, it was a, a, a dance hall at one time or a community center? Community center until the 40s, then laid vacant. And then when Marta showed up, the story goes that she peeked in the window and fell in love with the place while fixing her flat tire, <laughs> went to Las Vegas the next day to leave and couldn't stop thinking about it and made an agreement for a dollar in good faith that she would come back and she could rent the opera house for $35 a month and that she had to do repairs. Back before Marta ever came, this was the Cork Hill Social Hall. And so there was a ball every Saturday night and the miners would come and they would be able to catch the train in from the mine and come and dance with the girls because there were some brothels across the street. There were some brothels in Ash Meadows and brothels kind of back over where the cemetery was. Um, and actually, the opera house sits on where Bessie and Happy Days' actual brothel was. They got moved when the town built the Civic Center. And these were the two these main... These were the two main girls in town. <laughs> Bessie and Happy Days. Happy Days. Which I always thought it was meant you had Happy Days, but then I, as I, I, I recently discovered Happy Days was a, was a woman. Yeah, not a TV show. Yeah. From the 70s. Jenny's hookup uh, is going to give us a tour inside the opera house. And it's, it's been closed, I think. Uh, so It just reopened about a month ago. Okay. It had been closed since uh, December of 2020. Wow. For COVID. It was actually a functioning opera house uh, right before um, it closed. And I, yeah, if you, if you find me on YouTube, I have a video of me dancing on stage. Awesome. Right yeah, before COVID. Definitely check Jenny out. She, she has just, I, I, I always enjoy watching uh, her, her content. It's, it's fantastic. But this is a, a thank for uh, Marta Beckett. And then uh, if you want to leave stuff, you leave it in that little front area because she is not buried in the cemetery. Okay, so where's she buried at? They flew her ashes over and dumped it in this giant courtyard. Oh, look, can we go over there? Yeah. All right. So as we're walking to go see Marta's headstones or whatever, I was explaining to Bobby, one, I'm standing on a swimming pool. There used to be a swimming pool right here in the courtyard. But the original swimming pool from 1924 is across the street there, tucked over from the side in, in the salt cedars. And it had wooden sides. And it has a ramp that goes to go into it. And uh, our friend Duffy, who's still alive, that was born here, he made an agreement when he was nine years old to, um, if he scrubbed the pool every week, because, you know, mold and stuff with the water, him and his buddy got to swim when nobody was there. <laughs> Which as a nine-year-old, I thought that was very Oh man, yeah. Adventurous How cool and, is that? You know, Hard-working guy. So this is where we encourage people to... So, well, I guess we encourage you to leave your coins and your things of that nature. We cannot guarantee that people will not come and help themselves to that. Uh, as I'm looking, I'm like, there seems to be some coins missing there. Um, but um, people leave their little trinkets. Sometimes they come in and just sign the guest, the guest log. Well, yeah, she's not buried with her ashes, they flew over and dropped the ashes, which means that she's just in the desert, because as you can possibly hear, and <laughs> and also, I mean, once you're out in Death Valley, in Junction, you'll see it just is really windy. Yeah, yeah. sorry about the wind noise. It's <laughs> my fault. No, it's technology's fault. Uh, but there's a little courtyard that they attempted to build for her. There's been different managers over the years that attempt to do stuff, so... It's like, yay, we're going to, you know, half finished projects. But yeah, Marta is here. And um, I actually think she's inside the opera house, but okay, Very that's just cool. me.
We are now going to head over to the Death Valley Junction Cemetery and uh, Jenny's going to give us a tour of, uh, of who's buried over there and a little bit of history as well. So I'm real excited and uh, off we go.